Hey, this is Ian from EssentialTennis.com. Welcome to this video in which I'm gonna be discussing whether or not you should be trying to carve around the ball, either the top of the ball or the side of the ball to make spin on your serve, a phrase that is used very, very often both by players and by instructors. And we're gonna be using super high speed footage here of professional players and also an ex-professional player to see if that's actually the case on either a slice serve or a kick serve. So let's go ahead and go right to the examples. And the first person we're gonna be looking at today is named Fabio, who is familiar to many of you because he has helped me create several of my online courses. He's an ex-ATP player, very, very good player. And I wanna use him as an example first, simply because I was able to get behind him with my camera and ask him for specific shots. And the first one we're gonna look at here is a kick serve out wide on the ad side. And I wanna just show you the serve first. Watch the placement and the action on the serve as it bounces in the corner and out to the right, Fabio's right, and really stretches out the returner here and a nice kick serve. So you've probably often heard it said that on a kick serve or any spin serve, you should be carving around the ball. And it simply means that as the strings are meeting the ball, as the two are touching together, you want to try to move the strings around the ball, either over the top of it to make top spin, or maybe around the side of it to make slice, or maybe some combination of the two. You've probably heard it said at some point in time. Let's see what happens. If, if that's the case, we should see Fabio's racket face moving around the ball some way or another to make this kick serve happen. So let's take a look at what actually happens here. You'll notice that shortly before contact, his strings and his palm are facing to the left. As he makes contact, you'll see that his strings and his palm are both facing towards the other side of the court. And now let's see what happens immediately after contact. Now, if he was, if he was gonna carve around the side of the ball, we'd see his strings turn and face to the left. If he was gonna come over the top of the ball, we'd see his racket face immediately come over the top and face down. We actually see his face close a little bit after the ball is already gone, and then his hand and his strings start facing to the right. So there is, there is a, clo a closing of the face. Again, the, the ball's already gone here. Contact only takes about three or four thousandths of a second, by the way. So the ball is very quick, quickly off the strings, and by the time it is, his, his palm and his strings are still facing towards the other side of the net. But the racket closes, it kind of comes around in an, in an arcing path, and by the time they finish, we'll actually see his strings and his palm facing towards the camera, back towards me. Shortly after contact, they're facing to the right. So the strings have not turned the face to the left, in fact, they've gone in the opposite direction, out to the right, and then around to face back towards me on this kick serve, okay? Next, I wanna take a look at a slice serve from Fabio. Watch this one. Here, I asked him to just try to go as far out wide as possible. And so he's going for side spin here, and he wants the ball to continue out wide after it bounces. Another good example of getting the returner stretched out. Here we don't see nearly as high of a bounce. Contact is being made right about chest height from the, uh, from the returner and sliding out to the side. So, I mean, this is really the, the most common example in my experience of people saying, yeah, to hit that big side spin serve, you want the racket to come around the right side of the ball to, to make it spin. We, we want the ball to turn that way. So wouldn't it make sense that the, the racket would come around the ball in that direction? So we should see his palm turn to the left and his racket turn to the left if that's the case. Let's take a look and we'll see very, actually similar things to that kick serve. Shortly before contact, his strings and his palm are facing to the left. Contact is made right here with his palm and his strings facing towards his target. And now here's where we should see that racket face curve around to the left, we actually see it turn to the right. And so now we see the, the strings facing to the right and his palm facing to the right. So we've made just about a full 180 degree, really we have, turn with the palm and the strings. 
which is also known as pronation of the forearm, you know, hand and wrist. All of this rotates. The shoulder also internally uh, rotates to allow that to happen fully. But the, the point here is that nothing is rotating to the left to come around the side of the ball or to carve the ball. Everything is rotating inwardly. You know, pronation is an inward, I'm sorry, outwardly for, for the forearm, inwardly for the shoulder is what's occurring with the body. And so that, um, what, that ha what that does to the racket face is it turns it out to the right, not around to the left. Okay, so that's a big wide a slicer from Fabio. Let's take a look at a couple of current pro examples of them hitting spin serves as well. And the, the first person we're going to look at here is Murray. Go ahead and check out this example, uh, Poin versus Gasquet. And you'll see this kick up to the right a little bit at the bounce. I'm sorry, uh, that was a Djokovic. Um, th this is more of a slice serve for Murray. He's definitely got a little bit of top spin in here as well, but it's more so a, a, a side spin a serve as evidenced by the bounce as the ball continues on its path towards Gasquet. Still definitely has some amount of top spin to it because, I mean, Gasquet is making contact at eye height here. What, but either way, it's a spin serve. And I want you to watch Murray, very similar to Fabio. Strings facing to the left, palm facing to the left. That contact right here, this is actually right between contact. We've got the palm facing his target, strings facing the target. And now watch his racket face turn to the right. Palm facing to the right, racket face facing to the right as he releases. So there is no leftward carving of the racket face. There is no coming over the top of the ball or around the side of the ball. The racket is going past the ball and that is what is creating the spin. And you can actually see the ball rotate. If you track the, uh, the logo on the ball, you can see it rotating sideways. You'll probably have to, to make this full screen in order to see that, but you can see the, the ball rotating sideways as it heads towards Gasquet. And now one more pro example, I want to take a look at Djokovic. This is the one I was thinking about. This serve has a little bit more kick to it, meaning the ball hits the service box and then comes up a little bit out to the right instead of continuing from a right to left path. So watch uh, this example as the ball bounces and then kicks up into the right, right there. There's a little bit of a up into the right hop. His uh, hitting partner here is just like one foot behind the baseline, but still is hitting this at eye height. I mean, for him to hit this in his strike zone, he would have had to have been a full stride inside the baseline, maybe, maybe even further. So let's take a look at what Djokovic does on, on this serve. See his uh, strings in his palm facing to the left here, slightly before contact. Here's contact right here. Palm and racket facing forwards and then watch as he turns his palm and his racket to face to the right shortly after contact. So there we took a look at four different examples, two of them from Fabio, one of a big kick serve out wide, one of a big slice serve out wide on the deuce side and the ad side respectively. Then we took a look at Murray and at Djokovic, and in all four cases the racket is actually turning to the right outwards, not around or over the top. And this outward rotation of the palm is known as pronation, which I've talked about in a lot of different serve videos. This is what's actually occurring and what should occur for you on any serve that you hit. We haven't talked about flat serves in this video. That's something I'm going to address in the future. But on any slice serve, on any kick serve, and even though we didn't look at it today, on any flat serve, there is pronation. There's varying degrees and I'm not going to get into what exactly the differences are today. I will be doing that in the future. But you just, for right now, know that you should be pronating on any serve. Period. There's no carving around the side or over the top of the ball. Now, I've received a lot of comments during this series of kind of Mythbuster type videos about, the, about whether or not I should, we should be using it feels like this as instructional cues. 
Well, I'm actually going to create a whole separate video. I want to talk for a couple minutes on that topic. I don't want to include it here. I'll, I'll give a link in just a minute at the end of this video so you can click and go right to it because I want you to know my thoughts on that. Basically, the difference between feel versus science, what it feels like versus exactly what's going on in reality. So I'll, I'll hopefully see you in that video. But uh, for now, thank you so much for checking out this one. If you've enjoyed this video, do me a favor and click like on YouTube. Subscribe to my channel as well. And I'll, I'll include a couple of links to my other Mythbuster series videos um, kind of in the same vein as this one as far as looking at common phrases that, well, just aren't actually true. <laughs> so until next time, thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you again very soon.